Welcome to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. Today we'll be talking about a type of art called still life. But what does still life mean? When we say still life, you're probably thinking life, which means we're going to draw something alive like a puppy. But no, you're wrong. That's not what we mean when we say life drawing. When we say life drawing, we're talking about drawing from life, like you're actually looking at something that's in front of you in real life. And when we say still, we mean it's not something that's alive and moving. So we're not going to be drawing puppies. We're not going to be drawing people. We're going to be drawing things. You know, something that you can just set on the table in front of you and draw a picture of what you're looking at. I like to call it observational drawing because you are observing with your eyes more than actually drawing. It's more about observing and seeing. So I have this basket of fruit over here off camera that you can't see. So I'm going to use this photograph to show you what I'm looking at over here. Now in this case right here, I am trying my best to get every last detail exactly perfect. I'm measuring how big things should be. I'm looking to see which directions things go. I'm looking at shadows and highlights and textures and trying to shade things perfectly, but that's a bit more advanced than I think most of you are probably ready for. This is a beginner level video where we're really just getting started with this kind of thing. So if this is your first time ever drawing a still life, or if you're just not that good at drawing a still life, maybe we should simplify and make things easier for ourselves. We do not have to worry about getting every single little tiny detail just perfect. Instead, we should focus on overall basic shapes and colors and things like that. And we can progress to that other stuff later when we get a little better. Alrighty, so as we simplify this, we're going to be working kind of from the bottom up and really from close to far. Uh, because some of these things overlap behind each other. And we're, we're really going to simplify and look for just simple basic shapes. So let's start by looking at that basket. Now that basket, that basket is curved, right? It's not straight, it's curved. It also has this handle thing going over the top, but let's just, let's simplify. Let's take out that handle and let's just look at the shape of the bowl or basket itself. It's kind of a crescent or a semicircle shape, right? So what I'm going to do, and I, I'm doing this with a, a Sharpie marker so it shows up really good on camera. You can use a pencil, crayons, markers, whatever you have. It's totally up to you. But what I'm going to do is down here at the very bottom of my page, I'm going to make this really big curve that goes all the way across. And I could go straight across or I could curve down across to make it a crescent. I'm just going to go straight across. It's like a semicircle basically, right? That's a really simple way of drawing a bowl or a basket underneath the fruit. Okay. Then if we look at uh, that picture, uh, if I look at my bowl, if I look at my basket of fruit, or if you look at that picture, you notice there's several different types of fruit in it. There's oranges, there's apples, there's bananas, and there's a coconut. And I see a lemon in there too. So how do we make all of that happen? What, oh, let's start with a simple one. What shape are the oranges? Well, they're circles, right? But should I draw a circle? I'm, I'm going to use this as an example. Should I draw, this is just the lid of some lotion that I have. Should I draw a circle up here on top where it's like sitting on top of that? No, it's got to be down inside, right? Right. Because think about how part of that um, orange is actually down inside the basket. So am I going to see the whole circle poking up out of the top? No. I'm only going to see part of it. And so coming up out of the basket or out of the bowl here, we're going to draw most of a circle, but part of that circle is down underneath and overlapping inside and behind where we don't see it. 
There are a couple of oranges, so let's draw a couple more oranges here. I'll draw another one that overlaps behind this orange and behind this bowl. Okay, so it's going to kind of come out right here and then stop right here. And then maybe another one on this side. Okay, so I got three oranges coming up out of my basket or bowl. Okay. What shape is an apple? Because there's apples in this basket too. What shape is an apple? It's kind of round, right? But it's not the same round as an orange. Oranges are just look like a circle. Apples kind of have, they kind of have a, the bottom shaped a little different and then they got a little stem poking up out of the top. How are we gonna draw that? Well, it really all depends on which direction we're looking at the apple, but to keep things simplified, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start up at the top by kind of drawing, you know how when you draw a heart, it kind of curls down in the middle? I'm gonna kind of do that, except it's not gonna come to a point inside. So I'm gonna start by coming up from behind one of my oranges here, and I'm gonna make a sort of wave. See how it dips down in the middle? But then instead of just keeping that wavy line going, I'm gonna wrap around and down. Okay, so you see how it's almost like a circle except it dips down at the top. And then coming up out of that, I'll make a little stem. You could even make a leaf if you wanted. I don't think that the um, apple that I see there in my basket has a leaf on it though. So if I'm doing a real still life where I'm really looking at it, I'm not going to draw what I don't see, am I? All right, that's okay. What's next? Let's go ahead and draw the lemon. There's like a lemon sitting on top of those oranges. Well, okay, so sitting up on top of these oranges, I'll draw a lemon. What's the difference between the shape of the lemon and the shape of the apples and oranges? Well, the lemons have those little pokey outy bits on the sides, right? So I'm gonna draw that by kind of making an ovaly shape, but with, see how I poked out the end? Poke out at the end? Poke out at the end on both sides. And then notice again that it overlaps behind my oranges here, underneath, behind there where I don't see this line. That's cool. There's also some bananas in this picture, in this uh, basket. So. Which way do the bananas go? Right, bananas are long, aren't they? Do they go straight up? Do they go off to this side? Do they go off to this side? Well, they go off to this side, don't they? So I wanna draw them going that direction and they kinda, kinda go behind my apple, right? So I guess I'll start by drawing the end of the banana, which is kind of almost trapezoidy, and then it curves and goes behind things. And then it's almost trapezoidy on this end too. And it has a stem. And then it curves down this way, behind the apple. And there's more than one. How many are there? Look at that basket of fruit. How many bananas are there? Well, from that photograph, you really only see two of them, but there's actually more than two there. There's three bananas in that basket. Hmm. Okay, well, what I'm gonna do is draw another one where the stems are connecting together at the top. So I'll start with the stem as being this kind of rectangle shape. And then it's got this almost trapezoidy thing where it kind of spreads out a little and then it curves and goes behind this first banana. And then it curves and goes behind those apples and oranges. Cool. There's one more fruit in there that we haven't drawn yet, and that's the big coconut. Now, what shape is the coconut? It's a circle. Notice it's bigger than the oranges and the apples, right? And also notice that it's kind of hairy. So do I just wanna like zip around with one straight line to make a circle? No, I actually wanna give it a hairy texture. So just to kind of show you what I'm doing, 
I'm going to put in sort of the path that this coconut is going to take with a pencil. It's going to have that kind of curved path, but I'm not going to just draw it as a curved line. I'm going to draw it as a bunch of hairy lines that wrap around in that circular path. And I can fill the whole thing with more of those hairy texture lines. Texture is going to be kind of important to this picture. So I'm just filling this coconut with some of these hairy texture lines. And then you see those three dark spots too, right? So let's go ahead and just darken in one, two, three little dark spots on the coconut. While we're talking about texture, the peels of the bananas also have a bit of a texture to how they um, curve along, don't they? So we can draw that. And the oranges kind of have almost like little spots on them this one it almost looks like like it has a button that you could press but I don't know I don't know if we should really get that detailed I don't know maybe I will maybe I'll draw that little button thingy that I could press but then there's a lot of these dark um, dots kind of spreading out from that and maybe this one has that little button type shape on the top and then these dots kind of all over it. Yeah, I guess that's working pretty well. The, let's see this other one. I guess it kind of, the button on this one is kind of on the other side where I don't see it. And the apple kind of has these you know, lines that kind of come down away from the, the stem, right? If here's the stem, it has these kind of lines that kind of come down. And the basket, if I'm trying to get into the texture of the basket, the basket has all these lines that go back and forth, crisscrossing in different directions, right? It's almost like a tic-tac-toe board or a checkerboard with these lines crisscrossing over each other in different directions, right? Okay, so now that we're done drawing our basket or bowl or fruit or our still life, we can start to add color. And again, I'm using watercolor paints here. You can use whatever you have, crayons, markers, colored pencils, paints, whatever. But we need to start thinking about those colors. And so like the lemon is yellow. So I'll grab some yellow paint and fill in that lemon with yellow. And what else is yellow in this picture? The bananas are yellow, so let's fill those with yellow. I personally, when I use watercolors, I like to start with the lightest colors and work my way darker. So I'm starting with these yellow bananas, and then I'll work my way into darker colors as I go. Now, if I look really, really closely at those bananas, they kind of have some brown in them too, don't they? Uh, I could get that detailed. I could look that closely and see all those little details. But again, we're trying to simplify here, make this the easiest, simplest, you know, for a lot of you, this might be the first time you've ever even thought about a still life, much less tried to draw one. So let's keep it easy. Let's keep it simple and just look at base colors. Okay. Although I must say that that apple 
it's not just red, right? We looked at these lines in the apple. It's like red merging up into sort of yellow greeny kind of colors. So let's do that. I'll start with a red down here at the bottom. And I'm kind of going in these lines. And then I'm gonna merge that into some sort of yellow greeny colors. All right, let's wash my brush, get another, let's get, mm, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of yellowish and then kind of mix a little greenish into it maybe. But I'm letting those colors mix on my paper and they're kind of turning orange at this point. So maybe this is working, maybe it's not, but at least it's fun to try. And, you know, maybe you'd be better off just going with a, a solid one color kind of thing. Maybe you want to try to get those textures into place. That's up to you. It's up to you. Okay. The oranges obviously are orange. So I'll grab my orange for those. And then I'll make the uh, coconut brown. And the basket, the basket is kind of, it's kind of brown, but it's also kind of gray and it's also kind of black. It's kind of, it's just kind of dark in some areas and lighter in other areas. But I think I'm just gonna kind of do a, I, I, might, I might just go with a brown for that as well. So let me grab some brown here for the coconut. Let's do a lighter brown here. So for a lighter brown, I'm mixing more water and less stirring of the brown. Oh yeah, yeah, this um, stem of the apple is also brown. And then uh, for the basket, I'm gonna kind of try to make that a darker brown. And the way I'll do that is by just getting a little bit of water and stirring that brown paint more. Stirring, 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 stirring. The more you stir it, the darker it will get. Up to a certain point, um, watercolor paints can't get like super, super dark. They're just too wet for that. Sometimes you need to do layers. Anyway, to make it as dark as I possibly can. I'm just going back straight into the brown paint without even getting water. Of course, that's only gonna work for so long. I need a little touch more water. And uh, if I really wanna make it dark, I can mix black into it when I'm done. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill completely with brown and then go back into it and mix in some black to make it a little darker. Oh, too much water, not enough brown. Stir it, stir it, stir it. There we go. I'm trying to make it nice and thick and dark. Anyway, uh, so I hope that you guys are having fun making your still life drawings and paintings if you're painting. And um, I hope that you're, you're thinking about what you see because that's the whole point. A still life isn't about what you draw. It's not about what the end result looks like on the page. It's about what you see. It's about the little things that you notice. Like we noticed the shape of the orange is different from the shape of the lemon and it's different from the shape of the apple. And we noticed that the coloring of the apple has this texture to it. And we noticed that the bananas have a little bit of brown to them and we noticed that the coconut is hairy and we noticed all these different things okay uh, we noticed that the basket is darker so I'm gonna darken that up anything you notice is what you should try to include in your picture if you don't notice it well then that's something you'll learn later right if you do notice it try to figure out how you can make it happen on your picture. Any little 
details that you see, try to make them happen on your paper. Okay? In this lesson, we discussed the basics of how to make a still life drawing, where you put objects in front of you and draw what you see. We looked at a basket of fruit and we used simple shapes and colors to recreate it in our own way. I hope that you enjoyed making this fruit basket with me and I can't wait to see you in our next lesson.